Dear students, now we are going to discuss the comparison between n-type semiconductor and p-type semiconductor. Let's start with the comparison of intrinsic semiconductor and extrinsic semiconductor. Intrinsic semiconductor is also called as pure semiconductor. Extrinsic semiconductor is called as impure semiconductor. In this intrinsic semiconductor, the number of electrons in conduction band is equal to the number of holes in the valence band that is given here Ne is equal to NH. But for this extrinsic semiconductor, number of electrons is not equal to number of holes. Okay. Doping process is not necessary in intrinsic semiconductor. But for this extrinsic semiconductor, we need to add impurities. For that, doping is important. So, doping is done to get n-type or p-type semiconductor material. Okay. At 0 Kelvin, that intrinsic semiconductor does not conduct. At 0 Kelvin, extrinsic semiconductor conducts well. It is having poor conductivity at room temperature. This extrinsic semiconductor is having very high conductivity at room temperature. In this intrinsic semiconductor, the conductivity depends only on the room temperature. But for this extrinsic semiconductor, the conductivity depends on both temperature as well as impurity added to that. Okay. Example, germanium silicon here, gallium arsenide, indium phosphate like that. So Fermi level is present at the center of the forbidden energy gap in this intrinsic semiconductor. But for this extrinsic semiconductor, Fermi level lies closer to the conduction band in case of n-type and nearer to the valence band in case of p-type semiconductor. Okay. Next, we are going to discuss the comparison between n-type semiconductor and p-type semiconductor. N-type semiconductor can be obtained by adding a small amount of pentavalent impurities to the pure semiconductor. P-type semiconductor can be obtained by adding a small amount of trivalent impurities to the pure semiconductor. Example for this pentavalent impurities are arsenic, antimony, phosphorus. For this trivalent impurities, aluminium, boron, gallium, indium. In this n-type semiconductor, the majority carriers are electrons, minority carriers are holes. For this p-type, majority carriers are holes, minority carriers are electrons. Okay. This is the structure of n-type semiconductor. This one is for p-type semiconductor. In this n-type semiconductor, when a pentavalent impurity such as arsenic is added with the semiconductor material, here we can consider germanium material, okay. So, 4 of 5 valence electrons are coupled with other germanium atoms using covalent bonds. The fifth one will be a free electron, correct. So, here we can add more number of arsenic atoms to increase the number of free electrons, thereby increasing the conductivity. So, here in this N type, the majority carriers are electrons, minority carriers are holes. So, whenever this arsenic atom donates one free electron, it becomes positive charge. This is immobile one. Whenever that electron is moving for the conduction, it can create one immobile positive charge in this arsenic atom. That's what given here. Similarly, in this P type, we are going to add trivalent impurities. Tri means three valence electrons are coupled with the germanium atoms using covalent bond. But the fourth bond becomes incomplete one. It can create a free holes. So, by adding trivalent impurities to this germanium material or pure semiconductor material, we can create large number of holes. Okay. So, here the majority carriers are holes, minority carriers are electrons. In n-type semiconductor, the pentavalent impurities are called as donor impurities. The reason is it donates one electron for conduction. In p-type semiconductor, the trivalent impurities are called as acceptor impurities. The reason is it accepts free electrons in place of hole. Okay. The addition of donor atoms increases the number of free electrons, thereby increasing the conductivity in n-type semiconductor. The addition of acceptor atoms increases the number of holes, thereby increasing the conductivity in p-type semiconductor material. Do you all understand? 
So here in this n type material n is for greater than b the conductivity is sigma is equal to q into n into mu n for this p type p is for greater than n the sigma that is conductivity is equal to q p into mu p that means the conductivity depends on holes alone here the conductivity depends on that electrons okay and its mobility finally the fermi level of this n type semiconductor material here the fermi level is shifting towards the bottom of this conduction band due to the large number of electrons in this conduction band so its value is given here the energy level of this fermi level is equal to ec minus that is the conduction band energy level minus kt log in nc by nt so here for fermi level is shifting towards the top of this valence band due to the large number of holes in this valence band than this conduction band so this can be given like this fermi level of p type is equal to ev that is energy of this valence band plus kt log of nv by